Hello cousins near and far. Welcome to my demonstration video, how I set up my DNA studies. So if you are thinking of setting up your own DNA study and looking for a template of sorts, or you happen to be a participant in one of my DNA studies and have questions about how it's set up, this video is for you. So for this demonstration, we are peeking inside my Native American DNA study. You're going to see some information blocked out to hide the identity of the participants. On screen, you'll see my Google Sheets for the Native American DNA study. I've chosen Google Sheets because it's easy to share with fellow researchers and participants while remaining able to edit, as well as being able to download as whatever file type I'd like, such as a PDF. At the bottom, I have three tabs, the actual DNA study, which is what you're looking at now, the round robin tab, which lists each participant in the study. Once I compare each person to another, I put an X in the corresponding column so I won't repeat the pairing and have doubles of the same information. The third and final tab is the cousin kits. Again, I list every participant in the study. Beside each name, I list that person's GEDmatch kit number, if I have one. Column C, I'll put the platform where that person is located. For me, no letter represents someone in my close relative cluster or the kits that I manage. M is another DNA study. G represents somebody for my group for this Native American DNA study. For this study, I'm using GEDmatch so I can compare everyone to everybody else in round robin fashion. If I was doing a solo DNA study, comparing everyone to only myself, I could use matches from GEDmatch, Family Tree DNA, 23andMe, MyHeritage, anywhere that has a chromosome browser. So I'd alter the initial in column C to reflect where I can find that match to view again if needed. In column D, after chatting with the person and inspecting their tree, I list the ancestor, branch, or tribe I think might be relevant from their tree. In this case, I'm listing their known Native American ancestor and associated tribe. Then in column E, I make additional notes if I find anything applicable. Now we come back into the DNA study tab and have a look at the column headers. Columns A and B are pretty straightforward. If I were doing a solo DNA study, column A would be just my name all the way down and column B is the match name, the person I'm comparing my DNA to. For the round robin, it's a similar thing. Each participant matched against every other participant in turn. Columns C and G are information directly copy pasted and column C is the chromosome the match is on. Column D is the starting location of the matching segment. Column E is the ending location of that matching segment. Column F is the center marking count and column G is the SNP count between the matches. Now, I work column H in two ways. I will list the common ancestor if known or maybe the geographic location or surname if there were a lot of blind spots. You are customizing your DNA study to suit your needs. If I don't know the commonality between the two participants, I might leave it blank or add a best guess for the column A person, depending on my goals for the study. So in this example, my Native American DNA study, I'm putting in the column A participants known Native American ancestor or tribe, or a short list of multiple known native tribes. And in column I, I'm doing the exact same thing, putting in the known Native American ancestor or associated tribe. In this column, I may also put the most distant ancestor of a surname if I'm doing a study on that particular surname. Or I might list the apex ancestor, especially if there's crossing branches or endogamy. In this particular study, many of the members descend multiple times through the Powhatan chief Wahan Seneca. So I'm putting him as the potential ancestor or target ancestor. After gathering all the data, I sort the columns with the A through Z sorting feature in this order. Centimorgan, SNP, then start location, then ending location, and finally, chromosome. And now we see things begin to align. We see in columns H and I, the common ancestor or tribes between the participants that have been compared in columns A and B. You'll see them all begin to look similar, maybe all from the same tribe or the same ancestor. You'll see the chromosomes align, the start and ending locations of all your participants merging into what looks like a super segment. And what you're looking for are matching numbers. The overlapping segments are matching a branch stemming from an ancestor. The matching numbers are pointing to a specific ancestor. Columns H and I will send you searching in the right direction. 
but it's chromosome mapping that will ultimately solve the riddle. Check out more videos linked on screen and linked in the description box below. Thanks for watching.